hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to customize your own tea bags this video is a collaboration with tj's magic touch i will leave her link down below she will be creating these using photoshop we will also be providing more tutorials for you guys how to customize your tea bags so today i'll be using silhouette studio tj will be showing you how to do it in photoshop and we'll also be providing two more videos on how to create them using microsoft word and publisher again check her link down below and let's get started on how to customize these Okay, for your materials, you're going to need a pair of scissors to cut out your design. A paper crimper, this is optional if you do want to crimp the sides of your tea. You're going to need tea of your choice. I recently just got these teas just for tutorial purposes only. We don't even drink tea in the house. A measuring tape to measure your tea. Paper of choice. Um, cardstock, this one is 100 pound cardstock. You can even use 65 pound cardstock, but it's just plain white cardstock or you can get glossy paper and this is the brand that i like to use i got it from office depot and it's gloss any paper that you get has to be compatible with your printer either inkjet or laser and i do have an inkjet printer if you have a printer you need your printer or you could print somewhere else and this is optional as well this is a trimmer and scoreboard from we are memory keepers this is optional as well, but you really don't need this or that, and I'll show you different options. And adhesive of choice, either glue or double-sided tape, and your software. Okay, so any item that you want to design, you need a measuring tape to measure the width and the height, and you're going to enter those measurements into the software that you are going to be using. Now, I always say add more so you can have some wiggle room. So you know that you need to cover the front and the back, so you're going to double the width times two if that makes any sense because you need to wrap around okay and then you're also going to measure your tab now if you own a scoreboard and trim board or a regular scoreboard you can just measure up here too and convert your um inches into decimals if you don't know how to do that just do a quick google search on basically like what is um one half in your decimals what is three four what is seven eight and you're going to enter those measurements into your software okay so that's all you're basically going to do so let's start designing the first thing that you need to do is open up your software and i am using silhouette business edition you can use this software without owning a cutting machine basic edition is free but i highly recommend paying for business edition it is a one-time payment I have a link down below on how to download Silhouette Business um, Silhouette Basic Edition for free. And then if you want to upgrade to Business Edition, check down below also from my affiliate link. Thank you so much for using my affiliate links. If you do use my affiliate links, I do get a small commission. First thing you need to do is go to your paper icon. It is on your right. And then it is, it's the first icon. It looks like a piece of paper. And that is your page setup. You're going to go to Media Size and click on 8 by 11 because that is the paper size that you are going to be using then where it says transparency I have mine on zero some people have it on 100 so they can see their grid but I like mine on zero so those are your first steps up here you have a plus sign and a minus sign that is to zoom out and that is to zoom in you are able to work all around your gray area but before you print everything needs to be inside of your white paper okay now I'm going to show you how to create your shapes. Now this is the size that I'll be giving you is according to the T that I have. Now if your T is not the same size as mine, make sure you tweak the measurements. You're going to go to your left, click on the shapes, and then click on the rectangle. You're going to make any size rectangle on your screen. I'm going to go to the fill panel on my fill panel icon on my right. It looks like a paint palette, and I'm going to color it black so you're able to see it. While my shape is still selected, I'm going to go up here where it says width, and I'm going to type 5.5 and enter, and then on my height, I'm going to type 3.25 and enter, all right? Now, I also want a small tab up here, so I'm going to go back to my shapes, click on the rectangle, make any size rectangle on your screen. I'm going to color it so you are able to see it. While it's still selected, I'm going to go to the width, and I'm going to type 2.75 and enter and on my height I'm going to type 0 0.75 and enter 
The reason why it's 2.75, it is because that is half of 5.5, which is this one. I want this tab to go right on the top here, and I'm going to zoom in. I don't think I have ever did anything with edit points during my tutorials here on YouTube, so this is probably something new that you're going to learn about edit points. So edit points basically is that you're editing the point of a shape or an image or anything in general. So I'm going to click my top shape. I'm going to double click it. Once you double click, you'll see that you have a, a little thing here that pops up that's called point editing. So meaning that now you are able to start editing your edit points. So I am going to zoom in a little bit more. And as you can see, you see little gray squares all around. Those are edit points. So I'm going to click here on my left. I want to click this top one. And you'll see a red line connecting my bottom edit point to my top edit point. My top edit point is white. While this one is white on the top, I'm going to click on my arrow keys on my keyboard going to my right. And I'm going to count to eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can do more if you want. So I'm just going to go to eight. And you see that this side here is tilting to my right. Okay, now I'm going to go here on my right one, and I'm going to click on this top edit point here, and you see that there's a line connecting this edit point all the way here, and this one's white. While this one's white, I'm going to click my arrow keys going to my left, and I'm going to count to eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there you go. I created a tab. Now I'm going to click somewhere else on my screen to get off my edit points and if I zoom out you can see that this side here is going to my right this side here is going to my left all right as you can see these two shapes are not connected we still have two shapes and you don't want that you want to be make this template as one shape right now it's two shapes sorry about that right now it's two shapes you want it to be one shape so click on the rectangle on the top, click one time on your arrow keys so it can be overlapping. And let me show you what I mean about overlap. I'm going to color it white. I'm going to zoom in. As you can see, the pink shape is overlapping the black one down a little bit. You need to make sure they're touching. So you're going to click somewhere on your screen drag your mouse and select both shapes you're going to right click and you're going to click on weld once you weld you see that you created one shape there's no line in the middle so even if i color this any color you created one shape see everything's one shape all right now to get your backgrounds, you can go to Google, you can go to Bing, you can go to Pinterest, you can go to Creative Fabrica, Etsy, wherever you want to get your backgrounds from. I am going to go to Microsoft Bing, and I'm going to look up sunflower backgrounds. I'm going to click on the one that I like. After I click on the one that I like, I'm going to right-click, copy image, go into silhouette, right-click, and paste. After I do that, I'm going to bring... The way that you make your images bigger is when you have your image selected, you have like a white rectangle here that you can go smaller or bigger. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to click here on my screen, drag my mouse to make sure I'm selecting my template and the background. And then I'm going to go to my modify panel on my right. If you don't know the names of your icons, if you put your mouse over all your icons, you can see the name. So I'm going to go to the modify panel and I'm going to click on crop. Once I did that, now you see that my shape has this image. Okay. So now you're going to start designing however you want. I'm also going to create a shape that I want to go right here. And if you don't know specifically where your half is, what I'd like to do is I will go here to my rectangles, make any size rectangle. Again, so you know half of the 5.5 is 2.75, um, so your rectangle, go to your width, 
type 2.75 and enter and the height was 3.25 and enter I'm gonna color it black so you're able to see it and if you put it right here you know that that's that half and you know this half so anything that you design on this half is going to be the front and the and the side that you design from your right that is the back so I'm gonna leave this rectangle here so y'all can see what I'm doing I went to designbundles.com and I ordered some and I port and I purchased some clip art of a girl drinking some tea go ahead down below and if you want to download them um, I do have an affiliate link this one was six dollars and this one was five dollars and again designbundles.net so once you download everything you're gonna go to a silhouette you're gonna go to file you're gonna go to merge And you're going to select the image that you want I'm gonna zoom out because you see this image is pretty big once you bring in PNG images you will see that it automatically traces your image and it's going to have a red outline so while my image is selected I'm gonna go to my outline panel click on the outline and no color to remove that red outline and then I'm gonna make this image smaller Like I told you before I want to create a shape and you don't have to do this so but if you do want to uh, do this shape I'm gonna show you how I created it so I'm scrolling here so I could use this gray area now I'm gonna go here to my shapes and I'm gonna click on the oval shape I'm gonna make any size oval on my screen and I'm gonna give you the measurements that I'll be using so for my width I'm going to type two point one six three and enter and on my height I'm going to type one point zero nine two and enter okay then I'm gonna go back here to my shapes click on the rectangle make any size rectangle of your choice I'm gonna actually color the rectangles another color so you're able to see this rectangle my width I'm going to um two point two seven five and enter and then on my height is going to be zero point seven two four and enter then I'm gonna click here on my screen select both of my shapes go to my transform panel and click on center once you click on center you will see that both of your shapes are centered together now I'm also going to use the edit points here but you're more than welcome to leave it just like this but I want my ends to kind of curve I'm going to zoom in so you're able to see it but again you can leave it just like this if you want I am going to double click on my rectangle so I can go back to my edit points as you can see my edit points are there I want to create an edit point right here right here where you see my oval is connecting to my rectangle so I'm gonna click right there to create a edit point and I'm gonna click here because I want my white rectangle to be there and then on your edit point is gonna say make a curve so I'm gonna click on it to make a curve as you've seen it curved up now I'm gonna click right here where it connects here click on here and I'm gonna click make curve so that one curves as well go over to my right one click right here make curve and do the same thing for this one so as you can see I curved but I want these two shapes to become be combined as one right now we still have two shapes so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to click here on my screen, drag my mouse, right click and weld. And now I have one shape. All right. So this shape, I want to color it. Now we're going to go back over here because I want to match these colors. And remember, we only have this rectangle here as a reference to know to stay in the middle. 
So while I have this shape selected, I'm going to go to my fill panel. When you on your fill panel, you have a dropper. It looks like a medicine dropper. So I'm going to click on that dropper, and I want to select one of the colors of the sunflower, as you can see. Now, while my shape is selected, I'm going to go to my offset panel that looks like a double star. I'm going to click where it says internal offset. And you can play around with the distance of your choice. So I'm going to go down a little bit. I'm going to go to my fill panel and click on the color white. That internal offset is still selected. I'm going to go back to my offset, click internal offset, click on the distance again to know. You just click on whatever distance you like. I'm going to go to my fill panel and click on that same color. So we created this. Now I'm going to click somewhere here on my screen, drag it to select all three. If you don't, if you don't group it, you'll have three different shapes. As you can see, you don't want that. So make sure you click here on your screen, drag your mouse to select everything, right click and group. I want to remove those red outlines. Now I want this shape to be right here. I'm going to click on the girl, right click, and bring to the front. Try not to go right at the borders of your rectangles because that's the part that you're going to crimp at the end if you are going to be crimping. Alright, so I'm going to select here anywhere on my screen. I'm going to go click on the A on my left. That's if you want to type anything. you got to first click on the A on your left. Then click on the A on your right. You're going to select the font that you would like to use. You can download free fonts from thefont.com. I have a video linked down below as well. Or you can order fonts from Creative Fabrica as well. And I'm also affiliated with them, so I have my affiliate link down below as well. Once you click on the fonts that you would like to use, click anywhere on your screen and start typing. Once you're done typing, click anywhere on your screen to get off the edit mode. Select your font. Go to your fill panel and select the color that you would like to use. Then go to your outline color and remove the outline color if you don't want no outline color. Go back on your A and if you want to type anything else. If you have everything there that you like, you can remove that rectangle to see how everything looks. And I'm going to place the rectangle on this side so I know to stay there. On the back, you can add anything of your choice. I'm just going to type something. So I'm going to do the same steps. I'm going to go to my left, click on the A, and start typing. Click on your screen to get off the edit mode. Click on it to center your font and then color it the color of your choice. Also, if you want to be able to see whatever you put in the back, 
So uh, remember, there's going to be a tab overlapping the back. You can make a small rectangle up here to know where to stay. So I got the shapes, got a rectangle, and then my height is 0.75. I'm going to color it black so you are able to see. And this is just a reference that you can add right here because this is where the tab is going to be. So you know don't put nothing up here so you're able to see everything on the back if that makes any sense. So I want to add an offset to this. So I'm going to click on my words, go to my offset panel, click on offset, and again, play around with the distance of your choice. Go to your fill panel and click on the color that you would like and get rid of the outline color as well. If you like how everything looks, remove all those rectangles. And that's how everything's looking so far. Now up here on your tab, you can also type something if you would like. Now whatever you type and it's going on the tab, you need to flip it upside down. So while you have it selected, there's like a green little button here. Hold down your shift key and then rotate it. You hold down your shift key so it can stay straight. Now make sure that you make it smaller and place it where your tab is going to be. All right. Once you're satisfied on how everything looks, Click here on your screen and drag your mouse, select everything and right click and group everything together and everything's grouped. I'm going to zoom out. Place your design here on the top. Click on it. Go to your replicate panel and where it says filter page, click filter page. Basically only two is going to fit. Then from here, you're ready to print. I'm going to be cutting by hand, but you don't have to cut by hand. You can have, if you own a cutting machine, you can just use your cutting machine. I'm going to show you how to set it up for print and cut. You need to go to your page setup, which is the first paper icon. You need to click on the third option, turn on your registration marks. And where it says thickness, put it all the way on um, to the side on one. You need to make sure that everything's inside of your red outline for the machine to cut. Now, because there's so much stuff going on here, the machine's going to want to cut your font and your image and stuff like that. So when you go to send, you need to make sure you select where it says cut edge. So it only cuts around the edge. Nothing else, just cut to edge. Like I said, I'm not doing all that, so I'm going to turn off my registration marks. You need to print first, even if you cut it with your machine. So right here is your printer icon. You're going to select it. You're going to go where it says print. I have a, you guys select the printer that you have. You ha I have an Ecotank 1600. Then I'm going to click on preferences. I like to print from the paper tray. So I have it here where it says paper source. I'm going to click paper tray. Document size 8 by 11. Paper type. I always print on presentation paper mat. I'm going to click on OK and print. Now you have different options as well if you don't have a printer at home. You can save this as a PDF file. PDF file means that your file saves and nothing will change. Your font or your images or your size is going to change. And you're going to go to File, Save As, and save it as a PDF right here. You're only able to save as a PDF if you have Business Edition, but I do have a separate tutorial on how to save as a PDF if you have Basic Edition. I also recommend saving this as a silhouette file so whenever you need to do any changes you, you will just open up the silhouette file and do any changes of your choice. If you're selling these files you also need to make sure that you save it as a PDF and then you will email your customer the PDF and all they have to do is print. Okay so I'm going to go ahead print and cut and we're going to assemble this.
first thing you're going to do is you're going to turn it around and you're going to fold it right in half. Make sure you line everything correctly and fold it in half. Once you have folded in half, you're going to grab a bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you can even use the tip of a pencil, like a mechanical pencil. Push the lid in. You can even use the tip of a mechanical pencil and go right here or anything in general. Even you could just fold, but I like to use something so it helps me. So right here, I am going to score it. Basically, that's what you're doing. You're just scoring it. So it's much easier for you to fold. All right. Again, this is called a bone folder. This came with my paper trimmer and scoreboard. But if you go on Amazon, there's different kind of bone folders. Once you score, you're going to see a line right there. That's where you need to fold. Can you see it? Okay, now you're going to grab your double-sided tape or glue, and you're only going to put glue coming here and here, a little bit, not that much, and just right at the edge or your double-sided tape. If you're looking for some good tape, I do like this tape. You can find it on Amazon or on Walmart as well. I really like this one. Um, TJ Magic's Touch also uses this tape, and that's how I learn about it, so it is very good tape. But today I'll be using my own brand glue, AK Craft Glue. You can find it on my website. Right now we're out of stock, but we will be stocking soon. So you're just going to put a small dab here and there. So you see the glue. And then you're just going to fold down and glue everything together. Once you glue all your sides, both of your sides, if you have any white showing, go ahead and trim that. You always want to go for a very professional look on everything that you offer. So just go and take your time and trim that little bit of white off. Okay, so this is how they're looking. Now the next steps are again are very optional. You don't have to do that, but I will be doing it. This is where my trimmer is going to come in. So I'm going to place my design here right at the edge and i'm going to score at one fourth and then on the other side as well as you can see you can see that score mark right at the edge again that is optional that's just being a little bit of extra but i do like that look now you also could go ahead and um, crimp the sides as well if you have a crimper. So this is the look it will give you once you crimp it. Now all you have to do is insert your teeth. Now 
Now I'm just going to put a small dab of glue there and close it up. You don't have to glue the entire thing, just a small glue. All right, guys, we're all done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please comment down below. If you have any questions, also feel free to comment down below. If you're not in my Facebook crafting group, it is called Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge. Feel free to go ahead and join over there and show me everything that you are creating. It doesn't even only have to be about my tutorials. It could be any anything that you would like to show us over there. Also, if you don't follow me on Facebook and Instagram, it is Andrina's Creations LLC. Go ahead and follow me. And if you would like to order anything from me, that's where you're going to message me on Facebook or Instagram. But if you don't have no social media, feel free to email me at andrinascreations at yahoo.com. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time I upload. We're on the road to 50K. Again, thank you so much for everyone that has been subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. And of course, I hope everyone has a blessed day.